If you have a whole lot of plastic flower pots lying around at home, let me show you how to transform them into something that can be pretty and useful and will be a great addition to your home. So let's get started with our pots. You're going to need to have a plastic flower pot which you're going to need to wash really well and then just take a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand all the way around the pot. I've already done this but you want to sand it so that the surface is rough and when we come to glue the fabric down it's going to stick nicely. Then you choose a piece of fabric and you turn it over. Now on your pot you're going to need to mark the middle part. So you have a starting point here and this is going to be where the two pieces of fabric join up. If you place these starting pieces on the fabric so that they would start your beginning of your fabric pattern like this, then as you lay your pot down, you're going to simply just take your pencil and draw a line on either side and roll your pot and draw a line on the other side and roll your pot until you have rolled it all the way around and this mark here meets down on the other side. So I have already done that. I've rolled my fabric all the way out and the solid line is the line that is the actual size of the pot. But because we want to turn the fabric over a little bit onto the inside of the pot on this lip, you need to add in a little bit of a seam allowance. And then if you want to cover the bottom area, you would simply place your pot down and trace around that as well. Okay, so let me set this aside and here is one that I have prepared already. And you will see now that if I lay my pot down on this piece of fabric that I have a comfortable seam allowance around the top and the bottom. So you can see on either side and I have a little circle here that's been really cut to go onto the base. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is to just take my scissors and make some little slashes into the top of the circle. So into the widest part of the circle, which will be the part that overlaps the top. The reason that I'm doing this is um, so that when you come to fold it over, that the little pieces will overlap each other and they won't crumple up and make a big lump. Um, if you're a sew, you'll know that when you come to put sleeves into a garment, this is what we need to do to get the fabric to ease in nicely. And if you actually don't do this now, you're going to find it's quite difficult a little bit later on because you're going to be sticky and it's going to be hard to use your scissors right then. So prepare this nicely, cut all your little slashes. It doesn't matter if they don't go right the way down because you're still going to trim the fabric. Then fold your fabric in half. And it is ideal to start in the center and glue outwards from both sides because otherwise you'll find that sometimes it's easy to actually get yourself in a muddle. So the glue that I'm going to be using to stick this all down with is podge. And I'm sure that most of you will have podge that you have from your decoupage days. I've got my starting point here marked on my pot and I'm simply going to paint podge onto this. Now the podge is going to be absorbed into the fabric and some of it's going to come through. So ultimately we will be painting podge on the front of the surface as well. And then um, we'll be sealing it afterwards. So put a generous layer of your podge on. And then it's important at this point in time that you actually get this first section lined up nicely. So I have my center point marked there and I want to line that up so that that's with the top of the pot. And I have the bottom one marked there and I want to line that up. If you get this done correctly, then the rest of the pot will actually flow quite nice and easily. So you can just do a rough little wrap around at this point and you can see that you've got a fairly even edge all the way around. So you should know that by now it's going to be easy for you to glue this. So because some of the podge will seep through the pot and um, through the fabric, um, what you can do as you are working um, do section by section, put your fabric down and then simply take your podge and paint it over the top. You're going to need to do this in any case so you might as well do it at the same time and you'll see even though I have a little crease here that once it gets wet that crease just goes away so I'm not a big fan of ironing myself so I've got rid of that. Anyway so we move on now. The podge will be nice because it will actually give a sealant to the fabric so if you are going to use this for something where it might get wet or perhaps you might find that it's going to be used a lot you can wipe it down nice and easily. So get this first section really nicely secured and then you can work either to the left or the right and just finish putting 
your fabric on. So you want to go all the way around on both sides. When you work with a fabric like a stripe, you're going to find that the stripe won't line up exactly on the other side and not unless you're a very clever pattern maker who knows how to match patterns but it's very difficult on a curved surface which is angled as well to get a stripe lined up so if you're a person who likes everything to match neatly then maybe choose something that has an all-over pattern maybe like a little spot or um, an all-over flower because then it won't bother you as much okay so we've nearly completed this first half all the way around if you have little threads at the stage snip them off you don't want them to be glued onto the front surface of your pot and you'll see that because I've actually pre-sanded this and it's gluing down at the podge that it's actually really sticking very nicely you don't get bubbles as you do with paper this would be a lot more tricky with paper right so this is fairly wet at this stage I'm now going to flip this over and come to the other side quite important to get a lot of podge into this little underneath lip so that you don't have a bubble at this point okay flip it over and just use your brush to flatten it onto the surface there we go these are lovely to put your pencils into you could use them in your bathroom because they will be sealed um, to put cosmetics in <coughs> excuse me kids crayons um, yeah whatever you would like to but very nice also a nice novel way of using it as a gift basket so once you get to the overlap where the two outside edges are meeting you will need to trim away a little bit and it's best to have a bit of extra to play with you don't want to find that you've got this far and that you actually haven't got enough fabric to cover your pot so I've got the option now of having this as a straight edge with a stripe at an angle or a straight edge coming down and I think I'm going to use this straight edge coming down so I'm going to just cut it here on I think I'll do a blue trim this little bit off on that side and I do this in sections just so that I can see what it looks like when I come to lay it up yeah I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to now make sure that underneath here this area that has already been glued down I just put some extra podge onto this so that the fabric that's crossing over will lie on top right now for the bottom area here I just simply put on a generous layer of podge and I just fold this over it is a very uneven surface so it's going to be incredibly difficult to get this to lie absolutely flat because there are all sorts of little ridges here so I don't worry too much about this on the underneath side but I do use the fact that the glue makes it wet and makes the fabric pliable just to be able to push it down as far as I can go and as flat as I can go remember I cut out that little circle that I will place on here towards the end right so we've got this all nicely down just keep your eye on it because if a little piece does pop up you just want to go back and podge that all right try now at this stage to smooth out any of these ridges of podge you don't want lines like that because they will show in your work okay all the way smoothed out and on a nice warm sunny day this will dry in no time at all right so let's turn over now to look at this top side and my surface is uneven so the first thing I'll do is just take my scissors and quickly run around the edges here just use your eye to actually trim off the excess you can always go back and trim a little bit more but you want it to be pretty evenly um, spaced above the lip of the pot there we go that will be good enough for now perfect and then because I have already done the little slits if I put some podge down here when I actually fold over and use my brush to do this then it's going to lie over each other they will automatically overlap and it's going to be a much easier process ok 
Okay, so you can see that that's folding over nicely. Just remember, put glue underneath and then paint glue on top. This is your podge that we're talking about. Podge underneath and podge on top. And you can see as you fold over that they just pleat themselves. Okay, spread this along nicely until you've got all the way around to the other side. I quite like to have this little lip on the inside covered to a certain extent because it just it adds a bit of detail on the inside where otherwise it would have just looked like two separate items. It links the front and the back together quite nicely. You could also, if you wished, cut a circle for the inside of the pot. Okay, so here again, smooth out the excess podge. Make sure that you've got it nice and even on the surface on the front. And then you can take your little circle that you have here, put some podge on if this has already started to dry, and simply just place your circle in the center. And again, applying podge on the top, you're going to make sure that this sticks down nicely. All the way around. I find just using the pressure of the brush, make sure that it's in contact with the surface so you can get it around. If it's a little bit big like here, you can trim this off. Okay, all the way around. Here we go. So right now I'm just going to cut a little bit of this off. I don't want it really sticking out below, or coming up the sides of my pot, should I say. Just make sure you clean your scissors afterwards, otherwise they're going to stick together. Right, there we go. That's a lot better. And then make sure that you have quite a lot of podge where the two pieces of fabric join so that you don't end up having bits that stick up. Once they get hard, they're not as easy to glue down. Okay, so all the way around the edge and then just neaten up the top here. I like to then put my things on a foam and I tray to dry. I find that they don't stick really onto that and so it's a lot easier. Make sure you've got all the little bits of podge up. Neaten up the inside edges. Okay, lift up all this excess podge that's on the inside. And if needs be, you can always just take a little bit of the fabric that you've cut off just to wipe away some of the excess of the podge. And then set this aside to dry. So I'd like to just show you now one that I prepared earlier of this one that's already been done. You can see how nicely it's been stuck down. I've actually used a matte deco varnish to be able to seal it nicely. And I think one or two coats of that will do nicely. The bottom has been glued down nicely. And because this pot was dark on the inside, just for a bit of fun, I glued a piece of fabric on the inside. So right here you've got two really nice little pots that would have been normally popped into the bin to, or to get recycled and you've got another use for them have fun i'd love to hear your comments please subscribe to my channel and i look forward to meeting with you again soon bye